Hi, I'm going to uh, be giving you a little bit of a tour of some of the new features that you can expect in the upcoming 0.15 release of KOS, the Kerbal Operating System mod for KSP. Aaron Drake and I have been working on this quite a bit, but I also realized that people haven't really seen anything coming out of that, so I thought it would be a good idea to give this teaser video. Standard disclaimers apply, you know. This may change, it's still under development, but I just wanted to let people know that we aren't just, you know, making stuff up. Things are actually moving along, and uh, this is going to show you some of the features. Okay, so this is a small craft I have created that uses parts from Infernal Robotics and parts from Laserdisc. It has four landing legs. Let me get that nav ball out of the way so you can see. Okay, four landing legs, each one of which is attached to a Infernal Robotics slider that can go up and down. Also attached to the same slider is a laser dist, which will show you the distance to the ground, and it's strategically placed to go right past the foot of the landing leg, so that it's giving you a pretty good idea where that landing leg, uh, how high it is above the ground, as opposed to the other landing legs. And the KOS script is going to use this information to move the Infernal Robotics sliders, the intent being to try to make the legs uneven to compensate for slope, so the craft remains vertical when it lands on slope. The script does nothing more than that. I kept the example simple, so I still have to fly everything manually. The script is only going to be adjusting the leg heights, and that's all it will do. Okay, well let me give you a, uh, an example of it, and let's run it off here. In order to find some actual sloping land to test this on, which won't take too long to actually go get to, um, I'm just going to use that little bit of shoreline near the Kerbal Space Center because it has a slight slope to it. it you know, it's a very, very mild slope, but it's enough to show proof of concept. I have tried this in hilly areas before, but it takes quite a long time to get there, and I didn't want to have to take all that time to set the video up. Okay, so I have it set to just drop on parachutes. Um, I think this will work out well. I will turn on, come on, click, be script. The lasers are now measuring distances to the ground, and using that information, it has decided to set the landing legs askew, as you can see here. Now, if I rotated the craft, it will change its mind as to which leg should be down, because it's reading those different lasers. And I made actually a slight mistake in this uh, launch. What I usually prefer to do in these tests is uh, move all these sliders to the halfway point before I start, so it has full travel direction both ways. I forgot to do that in this example, but it should be okay. If you want to use the idea on much more extreme slopes, you would want to make sure that you move all the sliders to the midpoint before you start the script. And there we go. As you can see, it compensated for that slope, and the craft is now almost completely vertical. Okay, so if you're curious to know the features that allow these sorts of things to work, the rest of this video will be me going over those features. Okay, here's the example script that you just saw running. Uh, we still don't have necessarily that great of a way to query the parts list in, a, in an elegant fashion. That's one of the things we'd like to work on before we release this. Um, so this version still has to do it the old way, where you have to actually iterate over every part on the craft. So plist is a list of all the parts on the craft. Here are some sublists that I've des defaulted to zero. And going through in a loop over all of the parts in plist, it looks for ones whose name is either either adjustable rail scalable, which incidentally is the infernal robotics part that I was using here, or ones that are distometer 100x, which is the laser part I was using. 
So depending on when I find those, if I do find them, I start adding them to these sublists. And I'm taking advantage of a fact that I know that the tree structure gets converted into this list structure in such a way that the distometer that I find immediately after the rail scale of all I find will happen to be the one that is on that particular arm. I'm sort of cheating slightly there using using the fact that I know behind the scenes how the list is actually built in a depth first search of the tree to know that that will work. That's the thing that I, I would like to see done a little bit better so you don't have to go through all this. But at any rate, when you finish this, you, these lists, uh, slider parts will now be a list of uh, the parts that contain these sliders. And slider mods will be a list of the modules that are on those slider parts that do the infernal robotics movement. And if you see here what's going on is I'm taking P, which is the part, and running this thing called get module, where you pass it a string, and it goes and finds a part module that is called that and returns you a handle to it. This is a new function. In fact, the ability to even have suffixes that are functions and therefore behave like method calls is one of the new things that we were doing for this. So, slider mods will now contain all the modules that are of type Mumek toggle, toggle, which is the, the infernal robotics uh, name for its, uh, its module that does the movements. And then also, all the distometers, those are the laser disks, they will get the laser disk modules that are on them into laser mods. So now we have these lists of the relevant parts. Falling down to here, I will go through the list of all the lasers and just simply turn them on. And if you'll notice, there's also another one of these uses of this uh, method call technique now. The L is the laser part, and I run set field, quote, the name of one of the fields, comma, the new value. And that is coming from here on the menus. If you right-click the menu, you can see that there's a field called visible and a field called enabled. They are Boolean types and you can discover that and then say, okay, well in that case I'm going to set them to true and that turns out that that actually does turn the lasers on. Uh, this just prints out the display on the screen. You can skip through that. Uh, it prints out more of the display. I can skip through that. Okay. So then, in a loop, every time I start a new, a new iteration of the loop, I'm going to go through and read all of the laser distances and stick that into an array. So terrain dists is a, is a list of the four different laser distances, one, zero through three. And it reads those, again, with this get field. So now, if you notice on here, there's a field called distance. It returns a uh, floating point number and I'm going to assign that to a value called terrain dist and then I'm going to stick that in the list. So this is how I build the list of the four different terrain distances. I then iterate over them to get the average distance of all four legs to the ground. And then for each leg, or each laser really, they're, they're matched one to one, for each leg that I have, I am going to figure out if I need to move it up or down. And the way I figure that out is, is the distance of this particular leg above or below the average distance. Based on that, I decide if the leg needs to move up or down. And I activate it by using do action. Now, do action does the action group type actions that you can get on a part. If you're in the VAB and you click on a part and you go to the actions tab, you can see several different picks for what you can move into action groups. Well, what KOS will now let you do is you can activate any of those without actually necessarily having to have them in action groups. You can just call them directly bypassing the action group system entirely. So because slider is, is one of these parts and of, 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 from Earth Fertile Robotics, and slider has an action on it called move underscore minus and move underscore plus that you can put into your action groups, I will instead call them directly. When you call a do action, you give it the name of the thing you're activating and a false or a true to indicate whether you're turning the action group off or turning the action group on. So to move in one direction, I turn the move minus off and the move plus on. To move the other direction, I turn the move minus on and the move plus off. And then I turn them both off when I want to stop moving. So that is, in essence, the way the new system works. The four relevant uh, methods are set field, name of field, new value, the kind of value you put here depends on what kind of field it is. 
do action, name of field, true or false, uh, and then get field. There's another one that this isn't demonstrating called uh, do event, which is slightly different than a do action. It's a little complicated, but um, one of the things that can sometimes show up on a, a module are these buttons that don't retain a Boolean state. When you click on it, it doesn't stay pressed in. It just fires off one event. For those kinds of things, they are called uh, KSP events, and those you will activate with the do event command rather than the, than the action command. So this theoretically works with any mod in the entire system. In fact, you could even iterate over and find the KOS script scriptable control system itself and actually turn its own terminal off and on using the system, which is kind of a weird thing to do. I don't recommend turning its own power off from its own program. That'll pretty much kill the program. But these things are all discoverable, and you can discover them as follows. List parts into plist. Oops, sorry, that's in plist. Um, that extremely verbose message you're seeing, that's something I have turned on for my own debugging purposes. You won't necessarily see that when you actually run it. And let's say I want to look at the zeroth part, which is going to be the root part. And let me type it correctly. That tells me that it's this kind of a part. Let me go save that. Now if I wanted to see what was on it, I could say print root parts uh, modules, and that gets me all the part modules that have been attached to it, and because it's a command call, there's actually quite a few. And modules simply returns a list of strings that tell you what all the mods are that happen to be attached to that particular part. So because this root part is an actual command module, it has module command module, reaction wheel, module SAS. These are all the things that command parts have. So let's say I wanted to look at one of those. Okay, set some mod to, oh, let's say, root part colon this is another function get modules get module give it the name of the module you're interested in this can be case insensitively done so I will say module SAS ah let me type the word print correctly there you go print mod And that tells you that I now have a handle on the SAS module. It apparently doesn't actually have anything I can do with it. Let me try... this one. And if you need to discover what exists on parts, you can continue doing this yourself and see what's out there and explore sitting on the terminal to learn how things work so you can write your scripts. Ah, module command has four things on it. I wonder what they are. Well, you can print a mods all fields. It's all actions. Or it's all events. If I can just type. Let's take all events. That's a good example. So capsule events, we'll set that to that. It said there were two of them there. What are they? Ah, control from here, of course, and rename vessel, of course. Well, let's try something interesting. Mod do event. 
which is the one I didn't show you in the script. Rename vessel. What will that do? Well, it popped up the window, but didn't give me any time to actually type into it, unfortunately. So as you can see, there's still some work that needs to be done, but you can, you can do almost everything that is in the system this way. For example, if I do that, I would now be controlling it from there. For me to actually uh, demonstrate that, I'd have to do that on a vessel that has more than one control part. But I have done this on other vessels, and that does work to switch the control from here, which of course there's a way to do that in KSP itself, or in, in normal KOS syntax. But the point is that this is a versatile system that lets you get out of everything the system can do. Um, yeah, it's, you, know, you have to walk through this and experiment for a while to find out what things are called. But once you know what they're called, you can pretty much implement anything you feel like under this new system. So I'm hoping this has got people uh, interested and excited about it. As far as how long it'll be before this is actually released, I'm not sure yet. We've, we've only gotten about halfway through our to-do list, but I suspect the other items remaining on the to-do list are going to be easier to do than the ones we've done so far. So I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't going to take too much longer. But again, this is not a promise. This is just a teaser video. Thank you.